Today we are going to do a tier list for the greatest generals in world history up to around the end of World War II. This is going to be a long video, I can already tell, so let's just uh, get on to it straight away. So we have Cyrus the Great. I'm going to put Cyrus the Great, I don't know, I should put him in S tier, God tier. Like, remember when it comes to this list, a lot of these generals are great, they're, they're pretty good generals, but compared to some of the other ones. Like, if you compare, like, one general to the other, there might be a huge difference, so that's what's going to make these different tiers useful. So, like, Cyrus the Great, in case you don't know who Cyrus the Great was, he was the first king of the Persian Empire. He had all these mighty titles, king of the universe, king of the four corners of the world, king of Sumer and Akkad, king of Babylon. So he had quite a few campaigns. He started the great conquests. Let's see here. So starting off from uh, Mir Persia over here, he managed to conquer the entirety of the Median Empire. He conquered I believe Lydia as well and Babylon, which is all very impressive actually. He ended up getting killed though in a battle against the Scythian tribes. Or at least that's what Herodotus claims. We don't know if that was true or not. Very likely that it was true that he tried to subdue the Scythians and ended up dying for it. But he is one of the first great conquerors. I mean, there were conquerors before Cyrus the Great, like Hammurabi and uh, Sargon of Akkad, but Cyrus the Great is the first, you know, the first of the greats. So, just because of that, we're going to have to put him in God tier. Next we have Miltades. And Miltades was the... He was the guy who's known for uh, defeating the Persians after the battle of at the Battle of Marathon, the famous battle in which an outnumbered Athenian force managed to outflank a vastly superior Persian force. And in the battle, a lot of people say it basically saved Western civilization from the Persian incursions. And that's all good. So we're gonna put Miltiades in a solid solid A tier for Miltiades just for doing that. But, like, other than Marathon, we don't really know him for, like, anything else other than, like, a. Uh... Well, he was actually the son of an Olympic chariot racer, which is pretty cool. He, he also had a downfall afterwards when he tried to take control of Athens by force. But other than that, though, he is renowned for the Battle of Marathon. Very decisive victory. Very important battle in Western history. So we're going to put him in a solid A tier. Bardalus. There's a lot of people here that I am not very familiar with, of course. I am not sure who that is. Bardalus. Bardalus. It's a wasp. So he's an Illyrian king, and he united many of the southern Illyrian tribes and defeated the Macedonians and the Molossians several times. He even faced off against Philip of Macedon. Raided Epirus. Battle of Aragon Valley. Oh, but he ended up getting killed by the Macedon. Yeah. Okay, so this guy was. He did do a little bit of stuff, but not much. We're going to put him in D tier. Marcus Furius Camillus. We're going to have to put him in a solid. Solid A tier. Camillus. One of the first great generals of the Roman Empire. Marcus Furius Camillus. One of the first of the greats. I mean, the dude was a dictator like five times. And he managed to defeat all of the different enemies of Rome. Such as like all the Etruscan cities and Ve and all the different... Yeah, he even like drove out the Gauls when the Gauls sacked Rome. So this guy's very important. So we're putting him in solid A tier. Agus Delay is the second. 
Agasilius II. I'm guessing he was a Spartan king, yeah. Okay, so he was a king of Sparta, and... Oh, this was the guy that was commanding the Spartans. No, he wasn't. This was a different guy. Cleombrotus. So he was brave in combat. He fought against like a bunch of different Greek city states. But like Sparta it's, in my opinion is kind of compare to compare this guy to like some of the other guys on this list. It's not he doesn't seem very impressive. Other than that he was like a Spartan. I mean he fought against the Athenians and all. But other than that, he didn't really do much, so we're gonna have to just put him in put him in the uh put him in E tier. I mean I'm sure he did achieve some small victories, but compared to everyone else on this list, he's not very impressive. Dionysus the first, this guy was a tyrant of Syracuse who fought against uh, invading Carthaginians, from what I believe. Dionysus the first Syracuse.
Alright, my apologies about that. You can skip, if you're watching the video, you can skip to 1023 because I had to print some shit out for a thing I'm doing. But other than that, we're going to just put Dionysus of Syracuse in the C tier. He had some success against the Carthaginians, but in the end, he was not able to, you know, he's not as impressive as these guys. That's for sure. So Xenophon. He's the leader of the 10,000 Greek mercenary group in the Persian Empire. Managed to achieve some victories, actually. He even marched. Yeah. He's actually pretty, pretty cool guy. He's a Greek, but he's fighting for the Persians. Kind of an interesting scenario. So, he's also a philosopher as well. I'm going to put him in, like, maybe B tier. Maybe C tier. He He's more impressive than Dionysus. That's for sure. Put him in B tier. Pimondes. He's the guy that, I believe, he defeated the Spartans at the Battle of Leuctra. So, and he reformed the Theban army. So, we're going to put him in A. Iphricates, he's the guy that introduced like the use of javis or peltests, which is impressive, So, but we're not going to put him in A tier. He's not at that level, but we're putting him in B tier. Timoleon, I, I don't even know who that is. Timoleon. So he's an, oh, he's another... Champion of Greece against Carthage, brilliant general. He seems just like a, he's just like Dionysus the first, I'm guessing. Parmenian, the general that fought alongside Alexander. We know who Parmenian is if you know who Alexander the Great is. He's the guy that Parmenian. But then. Yeah, he fought with Philip II, but he was actually defeated by Memnon of Rhodes in battle once, but then and then he went to serve on Alexander the Great. He's kind of just a side character, to be honest, Parmenian. I mean, he was, he was loyal, but then he ended up getting um, executed after. So his son Philotus was accused of treason against Alexander, so Alexander had Philotus executed. And because it was custom at the time, he also had to have Parmenian executed too. Parmenian is just a, like a side character. Put him in D. Even though he did like play a role, but he was kind of just a side character in the story of Alexander and Philip. Philip II, we're putting him in S tier. If it wasn't Philip II, Alexander wouldn't have been able to do what he did. Philip II basically reformed the Macedonian army and turned him into a war machine. He defeated the Greek coalition, united Greece for like the first time ever. So yeah, putting him there. Marcus Valerius Corvius. I think this guy deserves to be an A tier because he fought off the Samnites in a series of successful campaigns. And then now we have Eumenes of Cardia. This is I'm pretty sure this is not in historical order. Eumenes of Cardia. So he was one of the Diadochi. One of the successor generals of Alexander. He he was the secretary of Alexander. But then, like, after Alexander died, he became a contender. And he fought in against the Antigonus. And he actually held off Antigonus. And he did win a couple of tactical victories against Antigonus. At Gabiene. And at the Battle of... Um, Periactene. But then what happened was Eumenes allowed the Antigonids to raid the camp of the his own soldiers and his own soldiers betrayed him because that camp they basically lost their families because of that. So Eumenes ended up getting betrayed, even though Eumenes was actually pretty capable. So we're putting him in maybe a solid If Eumenes hadn't been betrayed, he might have actually done more, but the thing is like 
we don't we can't really see it we can't really say what if so we're putting him in C tier so Alexander great we have to put him in the God tier alongside Cyrus you know there's really no need for further explanation for that like you you kind of already you can kind of already tell you there you, you don't need to explain that further Coenus one of Alexander's generals just another side character like Parmenian but a little bit worse so we're putting him in E tier Ba ba bai chi this guy was actually a pretty important general in china i think this guy fought during the wars of the the warring states period and he managed to achieve a lot of victories bai chi he was the commander of the qin army and was responsible for the death of nearly one million he was named by one of the four greatest generals of the Warring States period and remembered as the most fearsome amongst the four. He... Okay, so Chinese battles are massive, just so you know. So you're, the casualties count is going to be a lot. It's maybe at least ten times more than, like, European battles. He even appears as a door god. That 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 This guy's legacy is quite a lot, so we're going to put him in S tier, actually. Baichi has to go in S tier. Chandragupta Maria. Chandragupta Maria, the guy that united the Indian subcontinent. He even defeated Seleucus Nicator at the during the Seleucid Marian War. Like he defeated one of Alexander's generals. And then he united pretty much most of northern India under his rule. And like that's no small feat because India remained divided for most of his history until the British came along, so Putting him in the S tier. Pyrrhus of Epirus. This this is going to be pretty hard to... Pretty hard to judge, Pyrrhus. He was a good... He was a decent general. If he had more resources, he might have done a lot better in the war... In his wars, because he basically had to fight off the Romans, the other Greek states and the carthaginians so he was all over their place and he won a lot of victories but he's his victories were very costly though we call it a pyrrhic victory because he won his battles but at the cost of most of his army you know the term pyrrhic victory another victory like this and we will be ruined i'm putting pyrrhus maybe in b tier like he won a lot of maybe A tier, I don't know. He does seem more impressive than like these guys. But he's not at this level. So Pyrrhus is going to A, a tier. Cause he was a capable he was even a cousin second cousin of Alexander the Great. We have Hamilcar Barca, father of Hannibal, the forgotten Carthaginian general. He was actually Hamilcar Barca. He seemed like a decent general. He's just so overshadowed by everyone else that we're gonna have to just put him in B tier. Ashoka. He's the guy that fought a very costly war, and then because of that, he. Want, he because of that, he decided just to stop fighting. So we can't really see what would have happened. Like, there was not a lot about this guy other than the war against Kalinga. So putting him in B tier. Philip Poman. I, I don't even know who that is. Philip Poman. Okay. He turned the Achaean League into a, an important military power in Greece. He even subjugated Sparta. Put him in B tier. Maybe C tier actually. He didn't seem like that important to history. Hannibal Barca. Hannibal, he's going in S tier, but he's not a god tier, and I'll explain why. It's because Hannibal Barca was unsuccessful in his war against the Scipio Africanus. But despite that Hannibal did so much for Carthage, 
Hannibal Barca, he won so many victories, like especially massive victories. Like he beat the Romans at the Battle of Cannae. The Romans lost most of their manpower just on that day alone. But then he couldn't just hold it in the end against Scipio. So Scipio has to go in the S in God tier. Just because of his victory at Zama. But to be honest, like there could have been a lot of it could have ended differently if Hannibal was supported by Carthage, but there are no what ifs because it already happened. Like this is not alternate history. So Hannibal has to just go in the S tier. But Scipio Scipio never lost a battle, actually. Next we have Xiang Yu. Xiang Yu, is this another one of the Yeah. He led them against. He led some victories against, for the Shu. But then he eventually. got defeated, and that was the rise of the Han Dynasty. So we're gonna put him in maybe B tier. Han Xin. Han Xin. No. Wait, what? Did I spell that wrong? Han Sin. We actually click the table tennis player. King of another king of the Shu dynasty. Or the Shu Kingdom. He's undefeated in battle for his accomplishments. He's considered the god of war. But then he was accused of participating in rebellion, learning to trap and execute on the Empress's orders. Oh, so this guy was one of those guys that was a good general, but then his his leaders got afraid that he was becoming too powerful. So then they like demoted him and reduced his authority, and eventually like executed him. This guy seemed like kind of like the. It reminds me like all these Roman generals that get killed. Han Sin is gonna go in A tier. Demetrius of Bactria. Demetrius of Bactria. Demetrius the first of Bactria. He conquered some areas in Afghanistan and India. He was never defeated in battle, and he was qualified as the Invincible. That's actually pretty good. But he wasn't like significant compared to like all these other people, so we we'll have to put him in B. Judah Maccabee. Judah Maccabee. I think we should put him in just maybe D tier, and let me explain why. Judah Maccabee led some the Jews into like some victories against the uh, Seleucids but to be honest at the same time the Seleucids were already very weakened so it wasn't really that impressive and most of his victories were battles that didn't result into any like you know big changes so we're gonna have to just put him in D Virethus Virethus he's an Iberian general actually he's the Lusitanians and they resisted the Roman expansion. He won a couple of victories, but then like he got betrayed and killed. So we don't know like what would have happened if he had survived. He probably would have eventually like gotten subjugated by Rome anyway. He won a couple of victories, but I put him in D. Mithridates. There are several Mithridates. There's the famous one, the one that fought against the Romans. Like this is the famous one. But then there's like the first Mithridates. I'm not sure with which, which one the one's talking to because there's like a bunch of Mithridates. The first is it Mithridates? Okay, this is the Mithridates of Parthia. So he's the first Parthian king to assume the title King of Kings, and he's compared to Cyrus the Great. And he fought a lot of wars against successful wars against the Seleucids, who were already weakened at the time.
and the Bactrians as well. So he kind of turned Parthia into a power that would become... That's actually, he's actually pretty decent. I'm putting him in... I mean, he's not at the medal of the God of War here. So putting him in B tier. Maybe put Demetrius in... Well, Demetrius in B tier too. Menander the first. I believe this is another Bactrian king. Menander the first, Greco-Bactrian king, and later Indo-Greek king. He conquered more tribes, but like that than Alexander. But that doesn't. That's just because he went further into India. Because Alexander, like they didn't, his troops didn't let him. He. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna put this guy too high. Putting him in maybe. Maybe C tier. Gaius Marius. He ensued the Marian reforms in Rome. And he won a lot of major victories for Roman Empire, even becoming like he but part but Marius's regime kind of saw Rome turn into a civil war, so we're gonna put him in S tier. Mari Marius Marius. Gaius Marius, yes. Yeah, he's in the important reforms are the Marian reforms, so. And he won a, lot, so a couple of big battles against Germanic tribes, and he fought in the social war against Sulla as well. Sulla's next, about next up on this list. Oh, we still have a lot of people to go. Might have to make this a two part if it takes too long. Whoa. Is that G cubing? So he defeated the Zhang Nu and won decisive victories such as the Battle of Mobei. He seemed actually pretty important. I mean, put him in eights here. A lot of the Chinese generals are actually really good. They have a lot of manpower at their backs, though. Yeah, like he even helped expand the Han Dynasty. The Sola, Sola, Roman general and statesman, and won the first large-scale civil war in Roman history. And the first man of the Republic to seize power through force. This is before Julius Caesar, by the way. Like I know everyone thinks about Julius Caesar as the famous one, but Sola deserves to be just as famous. Like, he conquered Greece and subdued the Greeks, won the battles against Mithridates, marched against his own, and he successfully did so. So Sola has to just be in the S tier alongside Marius. Like Marius is in Esther because of the Marian reforms and because of saving Rome from a Germanic invasion. Sola is the guy that basically brought the Republic down. And then we got Sertorius. I think Sertorius deserves a notable A tier. He fought a, a guerrilla war against the Romans, and he well, he was a Roman general that that decided to break off and try to form his own state, or just rebel against the Republic in general. And he held him off for quite a while. Lucullus. Lucullus. He fought the. Oh, yeah, so after Sola left, there was another Mithridatic war, and Lucullus was the general that was appointed at first to lead it, and he successfully did so for quite a while until Pompey came along. And replaced him. Because he ended up declining. And he lost his mind. So next we have Pompey Magnus. Pompey Magnus I'm going to have to put him below Lucullus. I know that Pompey eventually like. Helped subdue the east for Rome. But that's because Pompey was given a lot of resources to do so. Compared to guys like Lucullus. And Pompey ended up decisively losing a war against Caesar. Like. So, he's not, like, as great as the other Roman generals. 
Julius Caesar is going in the gods here. Julius Caesar won the most battles out of any Roman, any Roman general, and there are quite a few Roman generals on this list. So, he conquered Gaul, he defeated Pompey, he was a capable general. Declared himself dictator, just like Sola. Next, like Marcus Agrippa. Agrippa, I gotta appreciate Agrippa for helping Augustus pull through, because Agrippa kind of helped carry Augustus during the battles and stuff, because Augustus was the political, and Agrippa was the military. So, I gotta give him that. I got Germanicus. Germanicus was a was the son of N Nero Claudius Drusus. Yeah, he won a lot of victories in Germania and avenged the Roman defeat at the Tudorberg when he defeated Arminius at Idistaviso. So Germanicus, I'm gonna put him. I don't know if I should put him at the same level as like Pyrrhus of Epirus, so I'm just gonna put him in B tier. Cause remember, we're comparing these guys to each other, like not just on how good they they were alone. Like we're comparing like Germanicus as compared to like Sola and uh, these guys. These are random people. So Vespasian is who we have next. He's the guy that helped crush the Jewish revolt, and he won the war, the year of the five emperors. She's pretty impressive, so I'm putting him in A. Agricola. He won a major victory against the Scots and helped consolidate Roman power in Britain. But should I put him above Germanicus, though? He's not above Germanicus, so leave him in B. Trajan. He's the emperor that brought Rome to its greatest extent. And he conquered Dacian tribes. Bring Trajan in s tier pompeianus I, I, don't, I don't even know who this is pompeianus was it this guy the son of marcus aurelius and distinguished himself during war against the the marcomannic wars Oh, he was his second son. Or is he the general? Who's his father? His father, remember a question? Okay, and he's not the son of Marcus Aurelius. He's a general. He did some stuff in the Marcomannic Wars. Put him in, like, maybe D tier. Septimius Severus. Septimius Severus, Roman Emperor. So this guy basically is like he won the year of the five emperors, and he conquered a lot of yeah. Battle of Lugdunum is a famous Roman battle in Gaul, and he waged a successful war against Parthian sacking Tesphon. So he's actually a pretty decent general. Putting him in A. Sao Sao is going into S tier despite how he lost the Battle of Red Cliffs. Sao Sao won so many battles during the Three Kingdoms period that it's kind of unspeakable. He lost, he's kind of like Han the Hannibal of China. Like he won so many decisive battles but ended up losing one battle that kind of prevented him from going up here. Otherwise, he would have been all the way up here. Alright, we still have quite a few people. We haven't even gotten to like some of the good ones down here. Zhao Yu. So I believe this is going from like ancient times. Yeah, it is. Chinese warlord serving under Sun Tse, and he won a lot of victories in the Three Kingdoms period. He's the guy that defeated Cao Cao at the Battle of Red Cliffs, actually. So we're gonna have to just put him in S tier, but he he's not gonna go like all the way up here. And, like no way. He's not Scipio, but he's impressive. Ardashir. Ardashir. Uh, or is it Ardashir? Ardashir. 
Ardashir the first. He's the founder of the Sassanid dynasty that would go on to toe to toe with the Romans. He overthrew the Parthian Empire, so he did. He did do some stuff. So we're gonna put him in B. Aurelian. We all know Aurelian always has to be in the god tier, no matter what tier list you're in. If Aurelian's in, you're gonna to have to always put him up here. And I think if you know history, you you have to understand why. He literally like united a broken Roman Empire in only five years and refuses to elaborate further. That's just insane. Gallienus. Uh, Mick Gallienus, he, under Gallienus' rule, he faced secession, but he managed to hold the empire together and win a lot of victories. Even though he didn't reunite the empire, so we have to just put him in B. Odinathus, we're also putting him in B tier. He was the guy that successfully defended the eastern half of the empire against a Sassanid incursion. Shapur. Which Shapur is this? Shapur the first. He was the guy that defeated the Romans at the battles and he captured the Roman Emperor. So for the first time. So we put him in A tier. Constantine the Great. Constantine is a controversial Roman Emperor, but we're putting him in the A tier. He won the Civil War, just like everyone, every other Roman Emperor did, and reunited the Empire. Samudragupta. Uh, typo. Samudragupta. He's conquest laid a foundation for the Gupta Empire. Not to be confused, confused with Chandragupta's empire. He actually seemed quite important in Indian history. He's going to go up here with Chandragupta Maurya. Shapur II. I'm guessing Shapur II was just another... Yeah, he's just launched some successful against Arab insurrections. And campaigned against the Romans a little bit. He seems like kind of the lesser version of Shapur. Just put him in B. Valentinian is going to go into A tier. Theodosius, A tier. Both of these guys fought against Germanic tribes their whole lives, pretty much, and against Roman usurpers successfully. Julian the Apostate. We have to put Julian in a C tier. Because he won the famous victory at Strasbourg, but then he invaded the Sassanid Empire in such a chaotic campaign that it led to his own death. Stilicho. He held the empire together while it was collapsing. Put him there. Emperor Dawu. Dawu of Northern Wei. Seems like he was actually pretty important. Put A. Hmm. So quite a few people. It took this long just to get these guys done. No, what is this? Guange to. We're just gonna. I don't even know who this is. Put him in here, in D. Maybe actually down here, E. We don't, we're, he's definitely like not so bad that he's an F. Flavius Aetius. Putting Flavius Aetius in. He deserves to be an S tier, simply because he defeated Attila the Hun. Attila, because you got defeated, I'm putting you down in B tier, but you had a run going for some time. Majorian is in A tier. 
because he almost reunited the Empire, but then he got assassinated. Clovis the first of the Franks, King of the Franks. Now we're getting to the medieval times. He defeated the rump state of the fragmenting Western Roman Empire, known as the Kingdom of Soissons. Other than that, we don't really. We have some some of that, but put him in like maybe C tier. Other than that one victory, like he didn't really do much else. And he maybe like, cause like Charlemagne is like the real. Is he even on this list, Charlemagne? He isn't. Oh, he isn't. Charlemagne's not on this list. Oh my. Narses, I'm putting you in C tier. You kind of just helped along with Belisarius. Belisarius is in the. I don't know, should I put him in. Belisarius got defeated multiple times, so that kind of hurts his resume. But he still did a lot, so we're putting him in S tier. He helped conquer Italy, North Africa, back for the Byzantines. John Troglita, he. Successful Byzantine general, but he's not at the scope of these guys, so maybe put him in B tier. Barum, Shobin. I feel like he's just another assassin, so we're putting him in D. Li Jing. Li Jing. There's two Li Jings. Okay, this is the one. He defeated the Gok Turks with just 3,000 cav. Put Li Jing in A. Okay, Heraclius putting me in S. Because he. Basically, he's the Aurelian of the Byzantines. If he didn't lose all that land to the Arabs, which wasn't really totally his fault. Pulukashin. I, I can't even read some of this writing down here. Pulukashin. Pulukashin the second of the. He expanded the. Kingdom cover most of Deccan region. His victory. Okay. He's ultimately defeated and probably killed. Put him in maybe B tier. Amr ibn. Okay, now we got the Islamic generals. Most of them are going to be in A tier. I can already tell. So this is one of the generals that helped with the conquests, early Muslim conquests. But the real guy is Khalid ibn al Walid. If in case you don't know who that is, he won. He was undefeated in battle. These were all of his battles. He fought against both the Byzantines and the Sassanids. So he fought against two of the most powerful empires at the time. Even though you have to understand those two empires were weakened already, but still an incredible achievement. So we have to put him in, up there with the guys, King Samo. I believe this was the guy that created the first Slavic kingdom and successfully defended his realm. So he's like maybe B tier. I feel like this guy is going to be an A tier as well. This guy maybe B tier. A lot of these guys were just like, you know, supporting the conquest. Charles Martel defeated the Muslims at Tours. Problem is, a lot of these guys have only fought maybe one notable battle. But maybe put Charles Martel in A tier. This guy maybe put in B tier. Another Chinese general put in B tier as well. Constantine the fifth, he's B tier. Khan Krum defeated the Byzantines a couple times. Put him maybe in A tier. We still have quite a few to go. 
We haven't we haven't even gotten to Genghis Khan yet. Mihira B Boja. He's a king belonging to the dynasty. Okay, so he seemed. Yeah, he's an A tier. Definitely. This guy definitely seems A tier. Simply because his name. Arpad. First ruler of Hungary. Hungarian conquests. He seemed like an. Maybe a B tier, actually. He doesn't seem like. To the scope. Munis el Musafar. Uh, I don't know. These guys cannot be compared to some of these guys, to be honest. We'll have to put them pretty low. I'm a, we need someone in F tier, so let's put him down there. <laughs> Maybe put Coenus down as well. He's just a backup. Alfred the Great. Alfred the Great is going in A tier. He defeated the Vikings at the Battle of Eddington, thereby leaving Wessex to survive. Simeon the Great. I believe he was the Bulgar. Simeon the Great. Simeon the Great. First Bulgarian Empire, making it the most powerful state. So he's basically the Charlemagne of the East. I'm going to put Simeon up here, in S tier. John Corcuus. Corcuus. There's quite a few of them. He sounds like just another Byzantine general. We're putting him in F. Nicephorus II. He conquered quite a, f a bit of territory, but he's not going to be in A tier. We're going to put Nicephorus II in B tier. Otto the Great. A tier. John Smensky's C tier. Emperor Taizu of the Song is an A tier. Almanzor. He's the. Okay. Waged some important wars in Islam, but thereby, just another guy. Still haven't gone to the good people. Brian Boru. Irish king, one of the successful unifying monarchs in medieval Ireland, but I'm going to put him in C tier. Basil II. I feel like Basil II deserves to be in like S tier, because he was probably the best military uh, emperor of Byzantium. Bull's Law, the Brave. Bull's Law, the First, the Brave. Okay, so he's going to be in D tier. Mahmud of Ghazi. Put him in E tier. This guy's gonna go down here as well. And I'm not gonna spell that out. To grill. He's the, I believe, the first Seljuk leader, and he managed to conquer, unite Persia under Seljuk rule, and wage war successfully against the Abbasid Caliphate. 
Robert Giscard, his successful against the Byzantines. Put him in A tier. I'm not sure if Robert Giscard is among the same medal as some of the guys in A tier, so we're going to have to put him in B. Yusuf, D tier. William the Conqueror. He's only known for, like, the Battle of Hastings, so we're going to just have to put William the Conqueror in, like, we can't really put him much higher than A. El Cid is an S tier. We all know why. If he's a guy that the best general knight in Spain, Baldwin the First of Jerusalem. First Crusade, Count of Edessa, King of Jerusalem. It seemed like just another. He's a D tier. Emperor Taizu of Jin. Another Chinese guy. David the Builder. Put him in E. Put him in F. John the Second Komnenos. John the Second was maybe D as well. You lose the seal. I don't know who that is. You weigh Fue. B. Manuel Komnenos did not. He wasn't as successful a military leader. If you read about, it. he was a good ruler, and he brought Byzantium on the right track. But he suffered some serious defeats. In terms of military, military wise, so we have to put him in E. Frederick Barbarossa seems somewhat capable, but put him in C. Saladin. Saladin has to go in S tier, but he's not going to go in God tier because Saladin suffered several defeats. Even though he had a lot of victories, Saladin had quite a few defeats as well, such as to. The Crusaders, especially Richard of the Lionheart, Mohammed of Gore. Richard the Lionheart is going to go around the S tier just for beating Saladin. They're kind of at the same level, to be honest, even though Richard beat them, but Richard isn't going to go all the way up here. Genghis Khan has to be in the God tier. I know most of his generals did his work for him, but it's no easy feat to... Be the guy as commander in chief when you're trying to conquer most of Asia. So Genghis Khan is going in God's here. Jebe, one of Genghis Khan's generals. Miyamoto up here. I don't know who this is. Mukali. Subutai is going to go. I think Subutai should be an S tier because if you look up how many battles. Battles did Subutai win? Subutai supposedly won 65 pitched battles. That's more than like anybody. Even Napoleon didn't win that many battles. Like Subutai did lose maybe a couple battles, but Subutai has to go up in that god tier. Like he's the reason why Genghis Khan conquered all that territory. Agade Khan, C tier. Baibars defeated the Mongols, so we're going to have to put him in S tier for that. Alexander Nevsky, he's known for the battle on the ice, but other than that, we don't know. Other than that, it's nothing much. Tran Hung Dao, he's a Vietnamese general. He defeated the Mongols. Put him in A. He's not at Baibars level, but... Malik Kafur, put, put these people back in. Like, I don't even know who these people are. Most of these guys are... Guys that maybe like win battles against some tribes. That's it. Robert the Bruce is an A tier. Stefan Drusan. D. This guy is also a D. John Hawkwood here. Edward the Black Prince was actually a capable commander. Just put him in B tier. Timur the Lame or Tamar Lane. I have to put Timur in S tier. And let me explain why. After Genghis Khan's death many years later, 
his empire is divided among a bunch of different khanates. Timur, he rose from a peasant to become a warlord that conquered pretty much all of Persia under his lifetime. He was basically the Genghis Khan of Persia. He behaved much like him too. He's undefeated in battle, regarded one of the greatest military leaders and tacticians. After Timur's death, like his empire kind of fell apart, just like Alexander, but we have to put Timur up here in God's here. Vladimir the Bold, put him in C. He's another Russian. John Siska. Okay, now we're getting to the good people of the uh, early modern period. We're almost at World War II. Let me see, if I... Yeah, never mind. John Ziska. He's a Hussite. One of the Hussite leaders. D. Nuno... Nuno... Alvarez Pereira. Portuguese general of great success. C tier. Svan Lazarevich, maybe D tier. Henry V is going to go up in S tier just because of the Battle of Agincourt. Bartolomeo Colioni. Put him in B. Skanderbeg is going all the way up in S tier. I mean, God tier. He held off the Ottomans for such a long time. With a very limited manpower. <laughs> you gotta put him up there. John Hunyadi. He had some victories. He had some defeats. Put him in C. Mehmed the Conqueror. Put him in A tier. Stephen the Great. I don't know if he was like that great. So I'm putting him in there. Daniil Kolomsky. I don't know what that is. I'm pretty sure Walter Bon. Pettenberg deserves to be in the A tier. El Grand Capitan, put him down here. Salim the First or Salim the Grim, putting him here below Mehmed the Conqueror. Put this guy C tier, D tier. Shur Shah Suri, C tier. Babur the First of the Mughals. And then Babur is going to go in A tier. Ismail the first of the Safavids may be in E tier. But maybe he, we'll put him up to... We'll bump him Ismail. Did Ismail the first, this guy, win like any major battles? I mean, I know he was like the founder of the Safavids. Like, I learned from school that he was the founder of the Safavids. He did found a great dynasty. He warred, conquered, he conquered Iran in a very short amount of time. But then he ended up failing in a war against the Ottoman. He never really recovered from his loss at Chowderan. So we have to put him down in D. Alright, so... This has reached almost an hour at this point, so this is where I'm going to end this first part of it. And we'll see you in the next part where we rank the rest of these guys and have the final list.